Dario's American Stage family features instrument and patch cables with patented GeoTip technology, XLR cables with crimped connections, and kill switch cables that prevent onstage noise, giving you the strongest connection available. Nerds, I'm with Tom Bukovac. We are in uh, Blackbird Studio. This is yeah, your natural habitat. Yeah, my favorite studio. <laughs> What's not to love I about love this place, I love right? This place. Yeah, man, it's great. Yeah. Hey, so we're gonna jump into Tom's rig, but before we do, subscribe below. Okay, we've dealt with that. Now, Tom. Yeah. Last time I saw you out, you were with um, Joe Walsh. Yeah, right? man. Back in 2017. No, was yeah, it that long ago? The last Tom Petty tour. God, you're right. We threat. didn't realize at the time it was his last. Yeah, yeah. Last tour, but yeah, we got one gig booked for 2020 with Joe. For not a really grueling yeah. schedule. <laughs> <laughs> the 50th re uh, anniversary of the Kent State. Oh, really? Thing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So that's our one gig for the year. Your one gig, and yeah, otherwise, yeah, you're basically yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. It's just such a man. Yeah. Like I've always been. Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah you are. God, you. So Tom Bukovac is, is. First call, dude, around town, and we're in 615 forever, for, I don't know, like 10 years, 15 no, years, whatever. Than that. Yeah. God, yeah, I moved here in 92. God, yeah, I know. We, we right. moved here yeah, around the same, same time. time. Right. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, wow. Okay, man. Well, let's start with this very cool guitar. Well, this is a 61 SG Custom, or a Les Paul Custom, as I said, but the, the, the unusual thing is what? Well, the black color. Right, they're obviously. usually white. And this is a factory black. Oh, God. Got some nice righteous wear in the back. But this is probably one of, probably less than three oh, ever made. Wow. You know, kind of cool guitar. Is it? Yeah. 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 Is, it, yeah. is it all stock? Yeah, it's all there, man. How do you like the sideways wing? I never use it. Never use it? No one does. <laughs> it's shit, really. It's shit. I just think it's cool looking. Yeah, it right? looks. Yeah. It looks like a. Like I'll a tell you napkin. what else. What else is horrible about this guitar? Yeah. You ever, do you know how these factory three pickup Gibsons are wired? No, it's a mystery okay, to me. Check it out. It's absolutely useless. <laughs> well, these are less versatile than a two pickup guitar. Yeah. So you'd think that they would just the middle switch would would just turn on all three pickups, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool. Sure. It? But it doesn't. Factory wiring on these. Okay, here's your bridge pickup. Great. Here's your neck pickup. Great. And then listen to this. 
<laughs> out of phase, these two pickups. God. They could have accomplished the same thing with, with these two sure. pickups, and it would have been fine. Yeah. Not only does it get in your way, the yeah. third pickup, but I heard that Mick Jones used to wire his three pickup Les Paul Custom where he would, he would, you know, get all the three pickups in phase, and then he would make a master tone here and then use this as a blend in for the middle pickup, which would be great, right? Right. They should have thought of something like that. Yeah. Well, it's not too late. You can do it. Well, but this, you have to jack with a you don't 61 wanna, yeah, Les Paul. I don't mess it. That's, that's the thing about these, these old guitars. You don't want to goof with them too much. Right, right. It's, it's kind yeah, of sacrilege. Yeah, Although, sacrilege, yeah. so many guys do. Yeah. Well, they, especially in the 70s. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. It was like, yeah. that, that's why I don't yeah. really trust vintage gear that's all straight. Because yeah. I think everybody who played a guitar right. in the 70s. It and wasn't even, 80s. Yeah, it wasn't cool in the 70s to have a totally stock guitar. No. That means you weren't trying for anything new. Right, right. If you just played a stock 50 Strat, it was like, man. Yeah, I'm what's with you? Put a humbucker in yeah. <laughs> Put it in a super distortion. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, that's great, man. So anyway, I had a midlife crisis and bought this because it wasn't cheap. Yeah, right? I, I bet. But I was like, man, find another one, right? Yeah. There were probably not many around. Yeah. But this was like the bell of the ball at Grooms for a while, and your buddy Greg actually kind of talked me into buying it. Greg Voros, yeah, the guitar yeah. whisperer. Yeah, the guitar yeah. whisperer. <laughs> yeah. So this is decent. I, I mean, I love an SG just in general. This yeah. is great, great design. Great. The thing about SGs, in my humble opinion, is that they, it's the humbucker sound of a Les Paul, but it has less bottom and more mids. Right. Which is cool. That's where guitars live. Right? Yeah. So, like, Les Pauls can be a little woofy to me at times. I like SGs because they're, like, more... Because you really can't low, you can't roll enough low end out of guitar sounds, really. When I was a kid, I used to think that the more low end that a bass, that an amp head, you know, was, the better it was. Right. But as you become a session man, after years of trying to fit into the mix, you realize that you really can't roll enough low end out of a guitar. Right, isn't that crazy? The, the stuff that with, sounds right in the room. With these old Marshalls, the first thing I do is turn the bass all the way to zero. All the I way? Mean, all the way to zero. Because it's just, it, if you start trying to turn the bass on, it gets flubby sounding. Yeah. And like mid-range is your only friend in the mix. You know, when you got a big band and you're playing with a bunch of guys, it's like guitar is all mid-range. Yeah. Right? Bass doesn't mean shit on a guitar. Right. So there you go. Yeah. In my opinion. Okay, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So, okay, and that's the original PAFs in the whole Yeah, deal. man. Yeah, God, that's great, man. It's kind of heavy. Feel it. A little heavy? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah? All right. <laughs> hey, let's look at, what do you else get over there? All right, there? throw that back in there. Grab another one, whatever uh, you like. Okay, let's go with this guy. This is a 58. Oh, my. 335. First year with the unbound fretboard, right? So feel how light that one is. Oh, yeah. Nice, right? God. That one's, that's another Grins guitar really? that, your, that your buddy Greg talked me into buying. Well, thanks, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I bet your wife hates it when you talk nah, to Greg. No, she's, she's got her own money. Yeah. <laughs> this is a good one. This is a good 335. Right, let's hear that thing. I had a um, 58 that I loved before I got this, and I, and I got this one, and they were so like I kept comparing, I can't afford to keep both of them. And I was like, which one should I keep? And I kept goofing with them and I was like, could decide which one I like better, but I ended up going with this one. A little bit lighter yeah. weight, but they were both sounded great. But that pick up. Got some sustain, man. <laughs> Killer. Yeah. yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. A good one here. Yeah. That is great. Plays good. So, so is that what you do when you, when you, um, cause I know, man, I'm always seeing you with, you know, with different guitars. Yeah. Do you like do a, you, you kind yeah, of do a taste test, yeah. A-B them, and choose the best one instead Man, of stockpiling? I mean, I started getting into vintage guitars when I was 18 years old. I remember I bought uh, a chopped up 65 SG Special, and I, I was hooked ever since then. Yeah. And man, I literally have gone through thousands of 
guitars. Yeah. Like, I'm not even exactly. Oh, no, like, man. I've, I've and, uh, seen man, it. And, man, I used to have a music store for a while, and I was always buying and selling. Still to this day, I'm pretty actively involved in the sort of trading and yeah. guitars. But I've always been of the mindset that I would rather trade five average guitars to get one truly special one, right? Right. And after all these years of playing these things, man, like, I literally can just walk up to a guitar and just go like that, and I can tell you everything about it. It's right. crazy. Like, like just the, the acoustic properties and the way it rings and the way it sings and all that stuff. It's like, I swear, man, like, I've just been through so many of these things that I can just spot a good one. You know, and then sometimes you get one that you think is really good, and then you take it to a session or a gig or something and put it in the heat of battle and it doesn't quite deliver the way you hoped it would and I always sell those. Yeah. Uh, I, only, I, I give a guitar like or an amp or something or a pedal two gigs and sessions it and, and if it doesn't you. kill I get rid of it. Really? You know and I also don't like having guitars laying around that I don't play or I'm not like a guitar hoarder I, I don't have a lot of instruments but I just try to have some really badass instruments you know. Yeah. I just like, if a guitar, because they require constant maintenance and guitars, even if you leave them sitting in the case, they're changing every day. Isn't that amazing? Know? They drift. Oh man, and I don't want to keep trying to keep up with a bunch of guitars. So I yeah. just try to get all the ones that I have like really dialed in. I'm really OCD about the setups on these things. Yeah. I can't stand it when a guitar is not at 100% playability. That's why I have Greg do all the frets and I'm, and I'm really constantly goofing with the setups on these things to make them because it's like a thing with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do you, I saw that you have your like toolbox over there. Do you yeah. tweak oh, on totally. sessions yeah. all the time? Yeah, totally. Constantly. Huh. Yeah. What, what strings do you use? Uh, Deodoro New York XL 10s. Yeah. You know? I, I did play 11s for a while, for a couple of years, you know, back a few years ago, but I, it's just, 11s are cool, but well, I found myself like bailing on licks that I would have gone for. Right. On tens. Yeah. Because that high string. Eleven don't feel really that much different from a ten set except for that high E. Right. Man, that high E would kill you on a set of elevens, man. When you and I'd find myself like soaring into a solo and I'd be like, I'd love to just bend this note, but I, it hurts so bad <laughs> that I just like and then I said, Fuck it. I don't, at that point I don't want the guitar playing me. Yeah. I want to play the guitar. So yeah. I went back to tens. I could play nines. I mean I don't I don't think the strings really make that much of a difference. It's right. like I mean, I'm told that Billy Gibbs uses like eight. Yeah, and man, he's, and he all I saw him. I did. A, I was in a house band. He was on a gig, and and I said, man, I always wondered if he started doing that later. Right? Yeah. And and like, I said, man, can I ask you one question? He's like, yeah, man, what do you want? I said, have have you always played those eights? Like even back like on like you know Teja, and yeah, the right. Guelo and all that stuff. And he said, yeah, man, I started doing it like 1971. That's God. what he said. Because he said that he was in a dressing room with B.B. King, and and B.B. King let me see your said let me see your guitar. He handed him his guitar. He had tens on. He said, "Why are you working so hard, man?" And he gave it back. <laughs> but Billy could probably verify that story, but that's what he told me. That's great. Yeah. Well, why are you it. working so hard? Yeah. So you know. Yeah. yeah. Who's gonna argue with B.B. King? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's totally. That's right. Totally. Okay. Well, hey, well, let's look at the. That's okay. That's very cool. Yeah. Let's look at the next one. Ooh, this looks fun. Yeah, I love that guitar. There you go. Okay, man, you know, I'm a big Firebird freak, man. And um, I like both the, the reverse and the non-reverse. Yeah, I saw you at Joe Glazer's the other day with the Firebird. Yeah, um, and man, this guitar is absolutely magic. Okay, what's the story on this? It's like a 65 Firebird 1 and this sort of rare cardinal red. Finish. Never seen that color. And man, this is another one Greg did for me. This guitar was not like this when I first got it, and I've spent tons of time and money making it killer, but man, just let's do it acoustically. Yeah. It's unbelievable. This guitar is killer. It's such a good guitar. These are the best sounding P90s I've ever had on any P90 guitar, and I've had a million Les right. Pauls. This guitar is a bad boy. Isn't that funny how, how there's such a variance oh, in man. old gear? Totally. I mean, totally. Yeah. And I feel like these, you know, non reverse Firebirds are, are kind of looked down upon by a lot of guys, you know, because they, they are goofy with the slide switch and the, you right. know, and there's the bridges that they come with are not great. But if you, if you mess with them, I change the bridge and I goof with these things quite a bit. But this one is one of my favorite guitars, actually. I mean, this would be one of the last ones to go if I sold them all. This is a killer. 
Really? It's a really great one, yeah. Okay, let's hear this. Let's hear it. Sounds killer. to do to this thing to get it oh, like, man, where it is a now. mess when I got it it could play like shit I got I got had Greg do the frets new nut real bridge did you go with the same frets it came with or did you yeah like, I like the original size frets you yeah. know but, but it was it was terrible but he really came out great he said he had a home with time working on it too but it turned out great God, yeah it sounds great yeah. so do you ever do you ever buy guitars anymore without playing them well, you know, I've done a lot of, you know, buying guitars on Reverb and eBay and stuff over the years, but yeah. it's scary. It's scary. Yeah, buying an instrument sight unseen is a very unnatural thing, right? right. You know, because just holding the thing in your hands tells you so much. But I've gotten really good over the years of just looking at the pictures, man. You can, you can really tell a lot, right? Like, the guy's got great pictures. Yeah. And, and I always pay a lot of attention to the text that the people write. You can always tell a lot about the person selling the instrument just by reading the text. Sure. You know? Some people were like really honest and forthcoming about, about details, like little details, and you could tell he's probably a pretty cool guy that actually knows what he's talking about. Yeah. When you, the ones I'm afraid of is a 1957 Les Paul Gold Top, all original. Right. Those are the ones you're scared, because it's like, well, tell me something about the guitar. Yeah, man. yeah. You know, I don't care. It. It's like, just give me some details. Is it yeah. light? You know, is it, is, what's it sound like? What's the neck like? You know, you yeah. know people that get into great detail, these are usually the cool guitars. Right. Right. Yeah. It's funny, I saw something on, God, I can't remember what it was, like eBay, Reverb, or one of those yeah. things, where it was somebody who was selling something bogus, and you actually called them out on it. Oh, which yeah. Which were like as a public service announcement yeah, I do. to all of us. Yeah, I, I love yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, was, it was great, because yeah. this guy was, you know, it was a fraud. You know? Yeah, I don't like that. I oh, mean, because cool. there's enough, you know, I feel like there's a lot of people that sell vintage guitars that, that are not, you know, malicious people that just don't happen to know right when you buy something from grooms man those those guys know they like, know if something's been done and that's why i trust them so much because it's like some of the other guys will sell you stuff and they think it's original but they don't really know yeah. you know and you and you could you can get screwed but it's like yeah. it's a lot of money to be spending on stuff when you're not really sure you oh, know right. what i mean it's, these things aren't cheap you know oh yeah yeah, yeah. i mean it's a it's a it's like I mean, a lot of them. It's yeah, like they're buying like a car. buying stocks and stuff, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah it's crazy. Uh, that Gretsch over there is pretty cool. Okay, that's a, let's get into this guy. That's a 61, 61, 20. And it's got a good bit of flame on it, which is kind of rare for these, you know? Got some cool figuring in wood, which I always thought was cool. This has got the classic Gretsch tone. <laughs>
actually some sustain, which is weird for a Gretsch. Great. Cool. So that's all straight. Yeah, too, huh? another Groon's refret, you know, all my stuff. How great. So interesting, you don't have any a telly on this session. I got stuff in that case, but it's just, just in yeah, case. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really a telly guy. Yeah. I, mean, I play them when I, I, I when you have to. I prefer a strat. Yeah. Honestly, you know. I, f I feel like I'm more of a Gibson type guy. Yeah. You know, but whatever the song needs, man. Right. You right. know, whatever the song needs. Hey, the last thing you got over here is this cool... Yeah, man, that's a 001838. Oh. Guess where I got it? Uh, Greg Voros? <laughs> yes. This is definitely the best acoustic guitar I personally have ever had. What this year is it? 38. Wow. Chords so good. It's a killer. Feel yeah. the weight. Fact, it's super light. God, there's nothing to it. Yeah, man. It is so light. 38's a magic gear for Martins. 36, 37, 38. Magic gears. So, no truss rod, obviously. Well, no, it's, this is uh, pretty, and it's whooped. I think this was, I don't have proof, but the, the case says Leon in big sp sprayed on letters, no last name. So, who do you reckon it was? Has to be, right? I, it has to be. I don't know, man. Probably. Who else? You think he's the only Leon that would just write Leon? <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot of, <laughs> lot of bold Leos out there. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, that's great, man. So do you have to? Did you have to reset the neck or anything like well, that? Well, this or? is all. You know, I got it from Grooms. It's all been done. All straight. Yeah. Good to go. It's all good. They yeah. are the Martin people. God. They. I mean, that's how they built that whole thing it's on, on Martin. Those guys are amazing. Yeah, I think I think George is selling Martins out of his yeah. car yeah. when he started. 1970. God, isn't that great? That's great, man. Okay, guitars, fabulous. Let's talk about some of these sexy amps. And uh, let's start with this guy that we're running right now. The, yeah, man. Well, normally, like on most sessions, I always have to use heads and into a remote cabinet, right? Right. But on demos and when I can bring my own gear, I like to use little combos, right? Yeah. And I, I like to, I like the sound of combos, but a lot of times you can't get away with it on like sessions because you have to hide your cabinet right. so far away and you have yeah, to run into it. Can't tweak as you go. But like I like like pro reverbs and, and right. stuff like that. And this little Gretsch is my favorite. I just love this amp. I mean, I could die a happy man with just this amp. What what is it? It's a you know all these Gretsch amps were made by Valco, and this is a model 61 61. Originally had two six by nine car speakers in it. Really? But somebody a long time ago converted it to a 12, you know. Huh. That's a killer amp, man. Yeah. All three of those inputs sound different, and they're all really cool. It's, oh. it's not real loud, but the tone of the thing is amazing. So, right. Um, I just dig it. It's great. That's great. Okay, and so, and as far as the other heads... Well, this is probably the best amp I've ever owned in my entire life, and this is, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> rundown rig. Yeah. 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 The rundown rig. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is a, my favorite variant of Old Marshall is the Plexi 1968 Super Bass. Okay. With the lay down transformer. I, I buy every one of these I can find because they're the best Marshalls. And man, this is a killer amp. Um, the thing that's great about these 100 watts. When I was younger, I was always afraid of these 100 watts because I would always, I was like, I don't need a 100 watt amp. You know? Right. But then I, I realized much too late that <laughs> these are so much better than the 50s, man. Really? Here's why. Because a 50, when you, know, when you start cracking it open, it's already distorted. Yeah. These have a full range of beautiful clean sounds from zero to four. 
that are totally awesome. They're, you never would ever wish you were playing through a Fender when you're playing through these. The clean really? sounds are so good. And then when you get up to five or beyond, it becomes a Marshall, right? Yeah. So like I'm always using it for like really clean stuff. Like the other day I played on a, literally played on a Burt Backrack record with this 100 watt Marshall. <laughs> clean, the clean sounds are so good. And, uh, and then I, you know, not to name drop, but I've always been a big Eric Johnson fan, right? You know, I grew up listening to him. And I, I met him the other night at a gig. My buddy knows him. And we, yeah, I know he's always been a Marshall freak, right? So I, at the end of our little conversation, I said, man, I, let me ask you one Marshall question. He said, yeah, what do you want to know? I said, would you agree that the 68 Lay Down Tranny Super Bass 100 is the greatest Marshall variant ever made? Because they made a lot of variants. He goes, absolutely. He goes, I uh -huh. definitely agree. And he goes, he went on to say, it's amazing how many people don't realize how much better the 100 watts sound than the 50s. Just the sound. So, you know, this is great for recording, right? Because you obviously would, this would be too loud for a gig. But when you're recording, yeah. you can crank it. It doesn't matter. So, like, I would never go back to a 50 after these. And I, I think I got three of these now, and I love them so much. It's great. They're Gee. great. Do anything and to them or just... No, uh, this is the Van Halen amp too, by the way. This is the exact variant of the one, the classic Van Halen amp. Really? And it's great, man. It's just amazing. It's great for everything. I mean, you could just have this amp only and you can just do everything. Now, what cabinet do you have hiding? I, I, I've been using the same cabinet for 20 years, an old Bogner 212 huh. with, with uh, Celestian 65s, the old 65s. Right. White label. I love those. And you just... Uh, just old school, run the yeah. run the jack into yeah. whatever head you're using. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Let's hear about this sun. This is the Coliseum PA, um, which was actually the six, late late '60s. This is the first master volume amp ever made. Really? It's got four channel inputs for PA, and then it's got global bass and treble, and then a master volume. So you can crank these channels and you can turn the master down kind of low and it just sounds unbelievable. KT-88s, the reason I hunted forever to find one of these, these are impossible to find, like really, really hard to find. Uh, it's the exact model that Leslie West used on Mississippi Queen. Really? Which I, always, I thought was one of the greatest guitar tones oh, ever. Oh, God, yeah. And uh, this is the exact model that he used on that. And I was like, I bought one just to, just, just to see what it was like. I was like, man, if I could use it for one one cool sound once in a while would be cool to have, but it then turns out to be a lot more versatile than I thought it was going to be. It's oh. a really good amp. One of the best amps I've ever had, honestly. This matchless here is pretty cool because this is like, this is like a really, really, really early one. One mm. of the first four matchless amps ever made. Really? It has, it has no serial number. It has a different logo, uh, slot head screws. I sent a photo of this thing, a bunch of pictures to um, Rick Parada, the guy that started Matchless, and I said, you recognize this? And he goes, oh, dude. He went off in this great detail about, like, this is one of the first four amps we made on my kitchen table. <laughs> and uh, it's got, like, hand stenciled, you know, letters on it and stuff. Really? And it was, like, they made this, like, and it's a C30. Great. So what, any idea what year it was? 90, 1990. Really? First, yeah, the company barely even started. God. Yeah. Cool amp. Yeah. Because it's, it's hard to believe that was 30 years ago. Right, right, yeah, yeah. We're living in the future. And you're running the mill cream basement, you know. We all love those. Yeah. Know? President's Knob basement. Great amps, you know. And you just let the song determine which Yeah, you man. I, you know, I, I gladly sometimes play through the same amp all day long and just switch guitars for tunes, you know, and use yeah. pedals and things. You know, it's like, but it's fun. Like, these amps all have a, have a voice, you know. It's like, it's funny how you end up, you know, it's always, there, I always consider the fact that there's really three primary colors of guitar tones, right? Marshall, Vox, Fender. And it, I think it mainly has to do with the power tubes. You got the 6L6 sound, you got the EL84 sound, and you got the, uh, you know, the, e, the EL34 sound with the Marshalls, right? All those power tubes have a real distinctive sound that we're all used to hearing, you know? Anytime anybody makes a boutique amp, you always hear them say, well, it's a cross between Vox or yeah. there's only three sounds yeah. really you know so like no matter how I switch stuff up and I just keep changing things out I'll look over and it's Marshall Fox Fender eventually because yeah. those are the three things you need yeah and like this is the chime and this is like the sort of retro kind of you know old school flat guitar sound and then this is like the exciting 
Marshall thing. Do you, you know? find yourself <laughs> primarily using them as a clean platform yeah. and then getting the, the dirt from yeah, the Yeah, I, I do that a lot, but I also like to crank these things, you know, and just plug yeah. straight into them sometimes if the song allows. Yeah. I'm not one of those purists that, that like Derek Trucks or something that, that just will not settle for the, anything but the guitar plug right in the amp. I, I, I don't mind going through a bunch of pedals. In fact, you know if what? we... That's if, the perfect segue. Let's talk about yeah, the pedals. Yeah, the, you know, like with the pedals, like I, I always find myself using old guitars and old amps and then new pedals because old pedals are cool, but they don't... They don't ever really work. Yeah, they're like, noisy. Yeah, they're, they're, the bypass yeah. is terrible, you know. Okay, let's let's plug into a couple. What guitar do you want yeah, to well, anything you like. these with? Pick one. Okay, yeah. so so everything's off here. Yeah, right? so what's let's kind of go through your whole signal chain. Starts with that that verb. Okay. Well, that's the last thing. That's uh, the most amazing sounding tube spring reverb unit ever made. God. My buddy Ebo made that. It's incredible, oh, right? I know Evo. Yeah, you yeah. Know Evo. And he makes his great amps, yeah, too. Yeah, great amps. And yeah. So that's like the last thing in line. And uh, man, the preamp in that thing is incredible. Even what it just does to the front end of an amp, even if you turn the verb off, it's incredible. Really? So the, the board's going into that and then into the amp, right? So that's when, on all the stuff I played previous, that was the only effect that was on, was that reverb. Yeah. Right? And then the rest the rest of the stuff is just, is just I've always, ended up with the same I've got several pedal boards but it's all really the same stuff man I, I end up with like six or seven stages of gain over here a volume pedal and then I've got all the trail over here yeah you know I instead of like I'm not one of those guys that could ever use like a two-channel amp clean and dirty I have to have several incremental stages of gain very light because that's the kind of music we're playing around here. Like, like I start with a clean sound, and then each one of these is a very subtle increase in gain. Like all, even the EQs. Okay, let's just for funsies, let's take it from clean to filthy, yeah, and kind of yeah, talk about yeah, which one. Yeah, well, you know, your basic, your basic uh, clean sound. It's got a little bit of juice in it already. Yeah. But that verb is sick, right? Wow. So good. Yeah, that is just beautiful, man. So, like, you know, for like a real soft gain, like it just, I'll just put it side one of the two, uh, the Analog Man uh, King of Tone. I love this pedal too. The light speed is great. I'm a little bit out of tune, but there you go. <laughs> so then, and then my favorite pedal of all these pedals is the old Boss EQ. Man, I've and, got that pedal and it's really noisy. Well, you got to get them modded. What's the mod? Well, they just quiet them down. They can, you can go in and get all the hiss out of them. Right? Oh, this one's yeah. actually is not even modded, but, but I've got a bunch that are. But here's why I love this pedal, right? It, it, like I, I basically could get by with just this pedal. Because it's like, I use, it's the best solo boost pedal of all time. Huh. But like if you just bump the mid-range and then goose the gain a little bit, and then you kick it on when you play a solo, the whole world knows you're playing a solo on a live gig. Right. It's got just the right amount, like everyone's always asking what's the best boost pedal or whatever. Boss EQ, $40, $40 pedal, best boost pedal ever made. So like if you're just playing like, you know, riff, right? Playing a 335 on a live gig, that extra mid-range bump, you just turn the guitar to the amp just a little bit, you get the perfect octave up controllable feedback. Oh, that's great. And you bend <laughs> and just perfect octave up happens. Yeah. There it is, it's even there. And then that's how you know that's what's great about these, you know, and they've got so much gain. I mean, from at unity gain at five, this thing will crank like <laughs> But that's not all I use the Boss EQ for. I use it for um, a lot more than that. Like you can turn the neck pickup 
of a 335 or a Les Paul, which is usually a pretty woofy sound, instantly into a Gretsch by doing this. You know, cutting the 400 but boosting the bass and then boosting the top, right? Like, so here's a neck pickup of a, let me tune this thing. Okay, so here's like your normal neck pickup sound. <laughs> Also do fun stuff like this, like this. Gas the mids all the way completely. Put a little bit of other distortion. Which is like amazing for certain parts. Right. You know, I love lo-fi, uh, totally goosed EQs. Like that's why I have this pedal. This is only have it set up only for that so like it's just another parametric it's a normal sound an old EQ, I don't even know what that is. PQ9. But it's great for that low fi stuff. It's great. And then the you know, you classic Nobles, which I've been using for 25 years. I mean... Let's hear that thing. Yeah, I mean, that's classic. I mean, that's my all-time favorite overdrive pedal. Here's no verb. This is just dry, right? <laughs> Slap on it, because it'll be awesome. No repeats. Just put the boss EQ back in normal lead boost mode. Look at this. This is pretty awesome. Gas to 800 a little bit and put everything else pretty much flat, right? So you got here's like normal nobles. <laughs> it fills out the sounds. It's great for leads. <laughs> Another amazing pedal, the Son of Kong. You know, it's like Arthur Slopeman's pedal. This thing's incredible. It's like it's it's like a really fancy sort of parametric EQ. You can you can get a great sound, and you can sort of dial in just just the perfect amount of like open top end on on it. Like it's like if I'm check this out. do all kind of stuff. It'll do crazy like sort of Zappa-esque sort of distortions, but I just love the clarity that it adds like an EQ. You know, I mean, it's EQ interesting, free. you don't really, with the exception of the EQ, you really don't hit the amp very hard volume-wise with any of these overdrives. No, man. I mean, the, the Rat does, 
right? Uh, we, we've all... Well, it's a rat. Yeah, I love rats, you know, but... <laughs> yeah. Really particularly great rat, too. I, they're all different. I love this one. Right. Uh, time favorite pedals is the Dispatch Master. Amazing delay reverb combo, right? You can turn the delay off with that. Yeah, the earthquake. Okay, that's great. So, it's, so that's covered the drives, and then we're getting into kind of the, the sparkly bits. Over yeah. Here, the swirlies and the sparkly. Yeah, I mean, you just the pog and what everybody uses and the, like the Leslie. Yeah, okay, let's hear, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. so after your drives, you've got the Leslie, the pog. Yeah. The dispatcher. Let's yeah. hear that Leslie. Yeah. The Strymon Lex. I like this particular Leslie box. I've tried every, every one of them. The reason I like that one the most because it's the only one to me that sounds good at slow speed. Oh. They all sound good at fast speed, right? But like right. they all sound weird at slow speed. Most of them. This one yeah. sounds really good at slow speed. I think. I mean, this is my opinion, but. Yeah. but. Pretty good slow speed, and that's yeah. only in mono. I mean, if it was in stereo, it'd be way better. You could put a little preamp drive on that too. Good pedal, yeah. and then um, the, obviously the old VV2. Right. So is that one of the old ones? Yeah, I love this pedal. Shake. Yeah, they, they just reintroduced like a Waza version of that Boston. Yeah, these are awesome, man. Slow rates, high depth. In my humble opinion, the best delay pedal that money can buy, no matter what you spend, is the Strymon Brigadier. Huh. I mean, it's just the, for me personally. I mean, a lot of people have a lot of opinions about great delay pedals. I mean, I've goofed around with old memory mans and stuff, and I love old memory mans, but I'm done with them. They're, they're more maintenance than a tape oh, echo. You God, know? I know, man. And I just. And they're huge and they're yeah, buzzy. I mean, and they're, they're, they make yeah. noise and they're, they're great sounding. I love them. But man, I'm done with them. I've never. I've sold. I sold recently. Sold three of them to the same guy. <laughs> really? Yeah. A and, true. Yeah. Nut. Yeah. I'm just done with them. Yeah. So, but I, but this is an amazing pedal, and obviously the Line Six is amazing. Yeah. Okay. So, so delay wise, you've got the Strymon. Yeah, I love the, the I love the delays in the Line Six. In the, really? Okay. Yeah, I love like these analog ones like this now, one. Now, there's like a mod a bunch of people are doing to the M9. Yeah, that's that's it. That's it. Yeah, the Jack Vaughn thing. He goes in and uh, puts, you know, cleans up the audio signal a little bit. They're a little clearer when he gets done with them. They're great sign. Made a big difference. Yeah. I love that. What's that delay? Great delay. It's got a little yeah. mod. Now, do you primarily use this for the delay or just no, all the other everything. weird stuff? Reverbs are great. Yeah. Chorus. So you basically have these set on a few favorites for each and yeah. then flip through them like Yeah, like a, this got a good rotary. The Pog's amazing. Um, like, 
I particularly like to use the pog for like only octave up. Like if you if you take everything off, right, and you take your your dry signal down, and you just use the plus one octave a little bit, and like put a bunch of effects and things like like. But. Obviously, this is the best sounding guitar pedal ever made, in my humble opinion. This is like putting your guitar on IMAX. <laughs> right. The, but it's the a total, H9, total yeah. tweaker pedal. Like, I mean, I use the phone to control the Bluetooth. Bit. Oh, the whole, yeah, the, the full nerve. I don't even know what it's set on now. You can only get one sound at a time, but God, this thing is amazing. Let's see what it's doing right now. Yeah. I have no idea. Turn everything else off. Yeah. I don't know what I was on, what kind of drugs I was on, but, you know, when I did that. But, you know, man, this thing is incredible. I mean, I've seen guys that have like three or four of those right. on the same pedal board, and I see why, because they're incredible. I mean, this yes. is the best, literally, the most awesome sounding effect pedal I've ever heard in my life. Wow. That thing is incredible. No wonder they're so expensive, because they should be. Yeah, yeah, right. It's great. Now, in the uh, the expression pedal, is that for the Line 6? Yeah, that's for the Line 6, but I hardly ever use that. Right. I really rarely ever use that. Um, i got a bunch of other pedals and things. Like, I've got a whole drawer full of old vintage pedals. And yeah, things. swap but, in but, Yeah, swap as in, you know. Like, you know, it's a great pedal. I'll tell you, no one knows about this, but this thing is mind-blowing. <laughs> this French pedal called the... Collision Devices Black Hole Symmetry. God, man. Yeah, that one's under the radar, man. This thing is <laughs> so... It's like a... Oh, yes, Collision Devices, dude, of course. The this French th it's, one. This is like a... You know that band, Explosions in the Sky? That amazing I band. don't. This I, sounds like a finished Explosions in the Sky record in a box. <laughs> Can't and, reference uh, I don't know, yeah, but I love yeah, the name. Happy yeah, to be back. Yeah, the old original whammy pedal. And then, you know, right. There's one more thing I'll mention. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You, I mean, that's it, Tom. You kind of have to have every flavor yeah. just in case, right? The, these old Boss EQs, right? Right. Um, back when I had my music store, uh, some guy brought one of these in. He wanted to sell, and I was like, I was like, oh, yeah, just make sure it works. And I was goofing around with it. And I just happened to turn the level control all the way up, you know, because you're supposed to be Unity Gain at 5. And, sure. I, and I couldn't, I was like, God, that's like one of the coolest distortion sounds I've ever heard. It's got this amazing, like it sounds like an old Aerosmith record, like the rhythm guitars. Really? So the distortion is amazing, even if you don't even use the EQ at all. And uh, and then I started looking around. I was like, man, this is cool. And I, I didn't know if it was just that guitar or amp I was using at the time. I started using it on everything, and it sounds amazing for distortion. Yeah. Right. So then I started researching, and guess who else used to use one of those for distortion? Eddie in the early days. Really, Eddie? Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Oh, man. Is there any other Eddies? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Uh, no, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's yeah, that man. one. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, tell them that's so cool. And the other, only other one is that boost over Yeah, there. man. Well, you know, the Mason, Vertex is, yeah. is a great idea, right? Like, um, instead of having to use an old school volume pedal, which always kills a lot of signal. I don't care who makes it. All of all these volume pedals, like the Ernie no, Balls. And, is that the Dunlop? Yeah, this is an expression pedal, though. It's not, there's no audio going through it. The audio is coming from that box, right? Really? Yeah, that was, I, he told me it was Mike Landau's idea, which it probably was. It's a great idea. So you use that as like a, just a regular old uh, clean boost pedal, which is a good, really good boost. I'll show you. Right. Um, here's like. <laughs> Yeah. 
But then even with the pedals on or off, it doesn't matter. It still functions. You plug the TRS cable into the expression port and then just the volume pedal is always working on it, the expression mode. That on is so clever. So really you're cool. doing you have one of these? Well, I didn't know. I didn't know that they ran out. Like yeah, that. it's amazing. And, it, and and I should also give a shout out to uh, XTS who made this pedal board. Those guys are great. They're the best. Yeah, man. Those yeah. nerds will God. chase down a. Uh, <laughs> man, I mean, I don't everything. know. Like, I don't know what I would do without Barry. Yeah. Like, he's just a wizard. I'd constantly bring him all these horrible ideas, and he somehow makes them work. He's yeah. incredible. How many boards have those guys built for you? Man, so many. Like your tour board. Yeah. And this they, they did one of my boards recently. Yeah, and so many. And this board I've had forever, and it has never failed. Huh. Never. I've used this thing on a million records. It's never failed. I shouldn't say that, because now it will. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. And power-wise, you're using the yeah, Google Labs and the... Whatever they got on there. I don't even know. I just know it works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Vertex. Yeah. Yeah. Those guys are amazing. XTS, man. Yeah, 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 great, yeah. great, very exacting nerds. Yes, yeah. Totally, yeah. Wow, that is really clever, though, to take the volume pedal yeah. out yeah, of the great. loop. It's really great, and it works whether the pedal's on or off, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. I didn't realize really that. Good idea. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's too cool. Man, yeah. well, Tom, I can't thank you enough for joining yeah. us, you know? God, love hearing you play, dude. Thank you, man. Yeah, it's, fun. it's great. Thanks. Okay, till next Peace time. Out. Yes. <laughs>